me right now is Mike Adamson. Mike is the Director of Education and uh, Programs and such here at AEA, and we, I always look forward to having an opportunity to chat with you every year uh, at the show. Um, what is new in the world of education for folks in the avionics world and the electronics world? Um, of co you know, of course, we, we respond to the emerging technologies. I don't know if there's newness in the education world. Um, you know, you could argue that some of the unmanned systems are driving mm -hmm. some of the programs, um, and so you know, we we would say that a lot of those technologies are carry over to you know. Um, whether they're remotely piloted or piloted aircraft, those, mm -hmm. those are the same. Of course, that's a lot of the talk, so that's probably what's new um, uh, for, from a focus standpoint. Um, Technology-wise, um, you know, you look on the show floor and you see, you see something new every day, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's all kinds of things going on, um, but uh, I, don't know that, I don't know what's specifically new. Of course, ADSB is the topic of, is the topic. Of, is the topic. And uh, you know, of course, it's driving business for all of our shops, and and probably driving business for our, our education systems as well. But uh, uh, we're just trying to stay ahead of that. When you talk about ADSB, and I, I I know that, and I was a little surprised that when the the market report came out a couple of weeks ago, that that the number of units being sold was not where anybody expected it to be. Are you seeing that the installs are starting to catch up with? where it needs to be to make that 2020 mandate? Yeah, I think you can, you know, you can extrapolate what you want to out of some of those numbers. Um, but I, th I think you've, you've started to see this, we're not quite hockey stick, you know, pace yet as far as the curve goes, but uh, you're seeing an uptick at a pace that would tell you we can get close. Um, you know, what happens when we get to 2020? Um, who knows, with, uh, with mandates in the past in this industry, I do know the history is, uh, you know, crunch time gets pretty intense. Um, so of course, you know, I think it's, you've heard the association say many times that, uh, you know, now's the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, and now is the time. And I think even if you go to do it now, you're gonna experience a little backlog at some of the shops. Um, they, they're booked out um, and that's a great thing, um, but I think you're gonna see that extend. Um, so the pace, uh, what I see from the FAA, the data that they have uh, shows that the, the, that we're there um, and we need to keep that pace so there can't be any let up and I think that's also driving a little demand for technicians and I think we've as an association and at least my job and, and our uh, the job of our member schools is to answer that call uh, with new techs. So. You know we, we have heard a lot about that every time uh, a Boeing or an Embraer or an Airbus comes out with their uh, with their forecasts for the need for pilots and technicians. Right. And there appears to be, and of course, a lot of us think, well, they're talking about the engine, you know, the A&P guys. Yeah. But I'm sure that there's also a great demand for, particularly as you look as to what comes in for, for shops that are going to have to start installing all of this ADSB equipment, there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of demand for qualified people to do those installs and help out with that. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, you know, the numbers are typically the, what they quote, the licensed, licensed mm -hmm. and certif uh, certificated um, mechanics. Um, it's harder to quantify avionics, I think, um, because that system doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But, um, but in a sense, it does. You know, there are certifications for for avionics technicians mm -hmm. with the AET, um, the NCAT, and ASTM standards. But um, uh, it, I don't think we're left out of the conversation. Um, but I, I think it is, in a sense, maybe harder to quantify, um, and people focus on. Uh, the AMPs, mm -hmm. um, but I would argue that that's uh, an issue for us as well. You know, it's obviously a, a much smaller piece of that pie, um, but equally important as, as, as far as your access to the airspace, in my opinion. So, who is your pool for someone who wants to be an avionics technician? <sighs> Technically inclined people, um, and I say that because I, I don't want to limit the crowd that, that may or may not. Um, think they could do this. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're technically oriented, um, you'd be surprised at what you can, you know, the path to get to um, working in a repair station or manufacturer or design engineering or certification, any, any of the different jobs you can do. But um, certainly you start with the uh, community colleges and technical schools and, mm -hmm. and private institutions that are out there. Um, that's the first, first place. But um, if you're in another industry, we'd like to have you back. 
<laughs> um, there's a lot of other high tech, you know, fields mm -hmm. out there that are that are um, really, uh, you know, kind of sucking up some of our real good talent. Mm -hmm. um, and and I would argue that, you know, we're more fun, <laughs> um, maybe a little sexier. Mm -hmm. um, the pay is pretty good, uh, you know, and so I think we've got to do a good job of selling that uh, to the folks out there who may be technically oriented and, and interested in, in airplanes as well. You, you said that a lot of them had left you. Where did they go? That's a great question, right? Because you can you can look at any other high tech industry and and and, uh, and you know see it in the the wind farm. You know you can see it in um, you know medical device. You can see it in um, I guess you could argue unmanned aerospace, but you know I, I'd I'd say we still have our arms around those guys as well. But uh, um, specific to our shop's business, um, you know, anything that's high tech, anything that's computer related, is a potential poacher of our talent, um, and we have all of that. You know, we're we're computer oriented, you know, um, and we are high tech. Uh, so we've got to do a better job of of selling that. And it goes. Back all the way into the software developers, the app Absolutely. developers, yeah. all of that stuff can fall under this purview. Yeah, yeah. it can be software engineering. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that applies in aviation. Uh, more and more, more and more. More and more, yeah, more than you know, right? Um, and, and the folks that, you know, you think of a, a, a typical aircraft install, um, and we're down to software configuration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the wiring um, and the actual physical installation of the unit. You're talking configuration and integration issues um, that you see in many other fields. So, in the unmanned sector, um, how are you seeing that you're talking about it, that falling under the purview of of Aircraft Electronics Association? Right. Obviously, 99% of them are driven by electric motors, and they contain a lot of electronics. Right. Is that becoming an increasing part of of what you're seeing as far as your association is concerned and your membership is concerned? Absolutely. And yeah, we've got uh, we've got folks here. Um, with booths that, uh, that are talking about that very thing and um, that have networks of, of our member shops um, you know, that, that would be the, the folks that we're going to fix these mm -hmm. remotely piloted or you know, um, uh, unmanned aerial systems. So yeah, I mean, the fact that the, they have miniaturized avionics or non-certified av avionics um, doesn't necessarily mean they're not ours. Uh, it's, it's the same technology um, and maybe even a little more cutting edge in some senses mm -hmm. because it's miniaturized uh, but that's absolutely things we you know we are we have the expertise on um, and should and should be the, the folks you turn to to get them fixed on on the other side of that spectrum though is how many of the trigs and garments and and uh, those kinds of folks are now looking at the unmanned sector and saying how can I get involved in that right I, you probably just had that conversation um, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for them all, mm -hmm. but you have to think um, that that's a focus, right? Because um, they're going to be in the national airspace system. So regardless of how they're piloted, um, I would think that would be, you know, a way to minimize their, their, their size and weight and, and take some of that existing technology and put it in those smaller airframes. Keep in mind, we're not talking about the, the little, you know, yeah. hobby ones. We're talking, mm -hmm. you know, 55 pounds and up uh, to full-size aircraft. So they're absolutely the companies that uh, that should be looking at that, and I'm sure they are. I'm sure those <laughs> they probably won't lead on to all that they're doing, um, mm -hmm. but you would you would have to to imagine that uh, they're very involved in we that. We are getting some hints here and there yeah, as you stop by booths and say, "Well, we can't talk about it yet." But that's right. That's right. And that tells you <laughs> that tells you where the market's at, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's emerging, um, it's exponential, um, and I think there's you know everybody's trying to figure out a way to monetize it to some mm -hmm. degree, um, but everybody's playing in it. Absolutely, and we will as an association as well. You know, we'll, I imagine that we'll do the uh, different training courses, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the things that we do will just carry over to that as well. I know one of the things that is also under your purview is the the scholarships and yeah. and raising a lot of money to, to do those scholarships. And you've got a nice silent auction yeah. going on over there. That I've got my name on a couple of things. I don't know how I'm doing right now, but um, we'll hang on to them for you. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'll hold you to that. All right. right. Uh, <laughs> but. How is your how is your fundraising going? Are you seeing that perhaps maybe the economy is turning around a little bit? Yeah. That you're starting to see more people willing to make contributions yeah. and move this industry forward. In that yeah, regard. I'm glad you asked. Um, we had our best year in training last year as an association, and you know we, we're a we're a trade association that does training. We're not a training company. 
um, but we do quite a bit at our headquarters. And we had our biggest year um, in people and in, you know, obviously the revenue that goes with that. And that tells me that, that uh, obviously there, our shops are hiring folks and putting them through these classes and getting them ready to, to do the more installation work. Um, and with that, you get more people at the show. And with that, you get more people um, involved in, in the different fundraising activities. So it's all, it, it, it parallels everything you're hearing. You know, that uh, things are turning around, business is good, shops are backlogged. So that translates into the fundraising efforts as well. You know, you see more, more neat items over there and more people uh, wanting to be a part of that mm -hmm. and uh, being a part of, you know, growing the next generation of technicians. When you do that kind of training, is your training um, limited to association members or is it a way for you to perhaps grow your membership? It's primarily for the members, mm -hmm. um, but we do open it to, to outside um, you know, non-member companies. It's a way for them to learn about the association and join. And we open it to other individuals as well. You don't, you don't, uh, you know, you don't have to be one. Um, but, but it was built for the members, mm -hmm. um, for that supplemental training that they maybe couldn't send somebody to a different school or, or put them back in a, a full semester class. Uh, they can come and get a week or, or so of, of our training. So, um, yeah. In fact, um, we do an experimental aircraft. Um, uh, installation class and mm -hmm. um, of course that's you know that's for the home builder mm -hmm. um, that wants to learn how to do the wiring on their airplane so those folks are not you know members of the association so it's open to anybody but uh, our primary purpose was to serve our membership first. What other kinds of classes do you offer? Um, we've got uh, basic wiring and avionics installation mm -hmm. um, we go a little bit above that with um, avionics installation and integration mm -hmm. uh, we do a pedostatic um, RVSM ADSB implementation. Uh, we do regulatory with uh, certified repair station training. Um, we're doing some new classes with some of our uh, manufacturers here and test equipment manufacturers on operating their test equipment as well. So all of that's on our website, aea.net slash training. You can see the list of courses. And how else do you get people who are members of your association or non-members and make them aware of those kinds of training programs? This helps, uh, mm -hmm. certainly, and thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, you know, the website, we do a lot of outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at a lot of different trade shows um, outside of our own, and we try and share the, the, uh, the news that way, our own publication, lots of broadcast emails, um, that sort of thing. Uh, of course, all the social media outlets, we're mm -hmm. doing that as well. Um, so yeah, we, we do quite a bit of outreach, and like I said, it's, it's obviously working. Um, 20% up in, in our numbers, um, and I expect to do that again. So, How have you found, and you kind of just almost answered this question, but how have you found that, that your association is reacting to things like social media and, um, and being able to get the word out not only about their products, but the things that they're doing um, using technology that was not available five years ago? Right. It's changing constantly, right? I mean, the way we used to get the information and compared to today, you know, of course, um, our publication is our primary focus mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that's a fantastic tool, but I think we're just adding to that, you know, with, uh, with our reach and social media and, and um, our communications effort. Um, you know, you, you kind of follow the trend and what we see mm -hmm. others doing, but um, I think we've kind of taken a lead in some of those with, uh, with our work on, you know, Twitter and, and, and Facebook and, um, our own YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, where we repost the videos that, that you know you guys have as well. So we'll, we'll try every channel we can that we have the resources for, and, and I think they all just supplement you know our trade show, mm -hmm. our connect meetings, and then of course our Avionics News magazine as well. One thing more: Are you finding that the membership is is growing and dynamic uh, over the course of the, of the past, particularly as as the ADSB mandate approaches? Are you are you getting more and more people interested? in the association and what it can do for them? Yeah, I'd like to say, you know, I'm seeing more young people, but I think that's just because I'm getting older, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you do, you see fresh faces here, and, that, and, and so I would agree that, you know, the, the demographic is changing, um, and that's good. And we try and help that, of course, with our scholarships. We have three uh, awards um, that we give out to, to attend this show, mm -hmm. where we pay your whole way and, you know, give you a pass for the week and, and whatnot. So we're trying to do that, um, get some new faces here, maybe those younger folks back at the shops that don't always get a chance to come to these things, mm -hmm. try and encourage that. Because I think, you know, once you get them here, I think you could attest to this, you have to come back next yeah. year and every year. Um, so we're working harder on that, and that's what some of the funds from the auction and the different things we do will we'll fund that. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we do, you know, pilot scholarships, 
um, to teach them um, the other side of the panel, so mm -hmm. to speak, um, and just enhance their, their professional development. Uh, so there's, there's all kinds of things we're trying to do to get uh, that next generation, mm -hmm. and I think you're seeing it change a little bit. Hopefully you're seeing that. Um, I feel like we are, so just got to keep pressing. Well, Mike, we are out of time, but I really appreciate you coming and, and chatting with us. I look forward to this conversation every yeah. year, and it's, it's always a pleasure to see you. Likewise. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Aero News Network's coverage of the 60th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from New Orleans, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. It's called AirText Plus. The mobile office is now a true, cost-effective win-win reality. Because being available and part of the communication chain keeps you in control. Visit us at www.airtext.aero for more information and get started staying in touch today. Free Flight Systems is expanding its business into the Part 25 aviation industry through new avionics shop dealers, manufacturer partnerships, and STC programs. With a focus on the next-gen airspace and remote-mounted sensor systems, Free Flight Systems will continue to be a leader in the next-gen airspace. Visit freeflightsystems.com for details.